and as you can see, I'm, well, maybe you can't see, but um, I'm standing and um, I have a new, just a, a new um, way of, of running the stillness exercise and coaching in general. I just feel better when I'm standing and I have some movement going. So uh, if you'd like to join me in doing that, by all means, put your uh, laptop or your computer um, higher up if you want to stand or you can leave it as is and you can stand up as well. Um, the thing that I'm finding more and more in my life is that the more movement that I incorporate into any work that I'm doing, the more fully present I am and the more of my full self I'm able to bring to that experience. And it just is a way to shake up my energy, a way to up my energy if I need an energy boost. Um, and it just has been serving me really, really well. So I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. So let's do this. Let's get, um, let's just start with this. Let's get our hands together, getting some energy going, getting some heat going. I know that, uh, not everybody in the group lives in Southern California like I do. And it's so funny because here people get chilly when it, you know, dips beneath 65 degrees. Everybody's pulling out their parkas. We're not pulling out their parkas and complaining how cold it is. And I'm like, get a parka. Um, but where most of you are, it's probably pretty cold. So this is a really nice way to generate some heat in your extremities. And of course, you, as you probably know, especially if you live in a cold place, the main way to keep your body warm is to keep your core as warm as possible. And usually the extremities take care of themselves. But as we get older, our circulation can change. And so having additional um, heat on our extremities, our toes and our fingers can, can really, really help us feel cozier, feel warmer. Okay, get some heat going there. And then we're just going to play for a second with um, feeling um, what our energy does right how our energy works and um, i just want to tell you that um, if you don't believe that each of us carries a sense of energy um, or a form of energy beyond just our skin then i'm going to ask you to keep moving your hands like this and then you're going to slowly stop and then i want you to pull them apart a little bit and i want you to feel if you can sense any kind of pull between your two hands or energy between your two hands and as you pull them apart, you can feel that kind of dissipating or changing. And as you bring your hands back together, and you can actually do this with your eyes closed so that you can focus more on the energy field that you have around you. As your hands start to come closer to each other, you can start to sense one another's presence and the closeness of each hand to the other without them even touching, right? You kind of know when the other hand is getting close. And this is actually a really cool exercise to do with somebody else. So if you are in the room with somebody else, I invite you to um, maybe keep your eyes open so that you don't accidentally touch each other's hands, but have hands in front of moving in front of the other hand. And you can really sense when, when another person is close to you or not. Right. And you know this, if somebody's coming up behind you, they don't have to be touching you in order for you to know that they're there. Right. So like, I always laugh at those um, like horror movies when somebody comes up right behind you and people have no idea that they're there. I'm like, that's not really the case. Usually we know when somebody is, is close to us and we can sense when there's another creature or there's something else that is, that is close to us. So just play around with that energy a little bit and um, the backs of your hands maybe also, maybe that feels a little different. Back to front, back to front, front to front. You see how that feels different. Just playing with the idea that we are not, uh, we don't end where our skin ends. We extend beyond where our skin ends. It's kind of just a cool concept. And then of course, being responsible for our own energy, right? What energy are we leading with? What energy are we leaving with? Not just the energy that we bring to an interaction when we're there, but what are we, how are we taking the, the handle of the door before we open it? What's the energy we're bringing to that before we open the door and, you know, appear in the, uh, in the room? Right before we even say a word, what's our energy that we're bringing to that space? And when we leave the room, how are we leaving the room? Are we, how are we pulling the door behind us if there's a door? How are we walking away? What kind of trail of energy are we leaving behind us? Because we have, you know, energy behind us too. And we have sort of this bubble of energy around us is the way that I see it. Just keep that in mind as we go through our days. Yeah, so let's get to um, <clears throat> let's get to a nice still place 
and gently close your eyes if that feels good. And let's take a few breaths together. Let's go on the inhale, inflating the belly through the nose. And then exhaling through the mouth, letting the belly come back toward the spine. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. Inhaling through the nose. Take one more sip of air at the top of the inhale, and then let it go through the mouth as the belly comes back toward the spine. Good. And then let's bring our attention inward, shutting out the externals around us, or it doesn't have to be shutting them out, but tuning them out to the point where we can really tune into our internal world. It's all meditation is really is tuning in to ourselves. And so it doesn't really have to be as much an exercise in tuning things out. It's really tuning in. And in the process of tuning in, those other things just kind of fall away, kind of into soft focus. You know, if you picture yourself being the lens of a camera, you know, when you bring something in the center into sharp focus, the other stuff goes into soft focus around the outsides or when you're looking at something, you're staring at somebody's face in a busy crowd, crowded room or somewhere outside and you're really just focused on that person's face and their eyes. Everything else just kind of goes into soft focus. That's what we're doing here as well. We're just focusing inside, letting everything else fall away from our focus. And I want you to experiment with the feeling of taking the seat behind your, behind your face, behind your chest, behind the parts of the body that I'm going to be talking about in a moment. Experiencing those parts of your body from the inside out, as opposed to feeling them from the outside in, or nothing at all. So often we walk around just with a sense of you know, we're in a situation, but we're not really experiencing it from the inside out and it prevents us from being fully present. We don't even know it, but that's what it does. So let's take our attention to the feet, wiggling the toes and letting them settle like snowflakes on the ground or raindrops. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, inhaling, as you inflate the belly and exhaling as you press the belly back to your spine. Take your attention and wrap it around your feet, around your ankles, around your heels, around the lowest part of your leg, up around your shins and your calves, letting go of any tension that's there. Wrapping your attention around your knees, including the sides of your knees, the backs, and the insides of your knees, not just the knee cap. Breathing, letting your attention float upward over your thighs, the tops of your thighs, outer edges of your thighs, and the back sides of your thighs, where your hamstrings live, hopefully happy and free, not tight and congested. And let your attention wander around your pelvic region. How does that feel from the inside out, being aware of your pelvis and where your legs plug into your hip joint there and your lower back and your tush? How does all that feel from the inside out? What tension can you let go of? Is there some clenching maybe? in your hamstrings or your thighs or more likely your butt. And if you're standing, are you allowing that clenching to release? If you're sitting, are you able to flare your backbone out behind you a little bit? Let your tush be wide. Really let it be as, take up as much space as it takes up without judgment. Letting your attention come back around your belly and your side body around your ribs, 
front ribs, side ribs, back ribs, inhaling, feeling the flaring out of your rib cage. And then exhaling through the mouth, feeling the rib cage come back to center. Let's do that again. It always feels so good. Inhaling through the nose, letting the rib cage expand to its widest capacity. And then exhaling through the mouth, letting the ribs come back to center. Bring your attention up around your chest, around your upper back. Make sure that your left shoulder is facing left and your right shoulder is facing right. And if your butt has clenched again in the process, let that go. And if you don't know how to do that, then intentionally tighten up your bum and then let it go. Just like anything, if I say let go of tension, if you're not sure you have it, then I want you to in, uh, intentionally tense up that part of the body and then release it. It's a really good way, quick hijack for that. Let your tension flutter and float down your left shoulder to your left elbow, your left lower arm and your left wrist, your left hand, your left fist. Transferring the attention gently over to that right hand and you can do that by touching your left hand to your right hand or getting close again as we did at the beginning of this exercise. Letting that attention float around your right wrist, up to your right elbow, to your right shoulder. Letting your shoulders relax, shoulder blades on the back of your ribs. And in my case, that re results in my hands, my palms facing forward as I'm standing and as you're sitting, it may be the same. And let's see if we can keep that rotation in the shoulders and then letting our hands relax. So our shoulders are rotating backward onto our, the backs of our ribs. Hands are relaxed at the sides. It might feel like you're forcing it a little bit. That's okay. And then together, let's bring our shoulders up towards our ears, back toward the back, pinching a little bit, and then down and relax. Let's do that again on the breath, inhaling all the way, shoulders up to the ears, holding as we pull the shoulder blades back, and then exhaling as we pull them down and relax, holding the breath on the out breath. Inhaling, ears up to the, shoulders up to the ears, holding as we pull the shoulders back toward the backs of our backs, exhaling as we pull the shoulders down, and then holding on the relaxation of the shoulders. One more time like that. Inhaling, shoulders up to the ears. Hold as we pull the shoulder blades back. Exhaling as we pull the shoulder blades down on the back. And then holding the out breath as we relax the shoulders. And go back to your normal breathing. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And actually, let's change it now where you're inhaling and exhaling through your nose only if you're able and your lips are pillow soft. Letting the attention float on up from the shoulders, across our trapezius muscles in the back and the sides of our neck, and then the front of our neck from the collarbones resting easy to the chin, noticing any tension in the throat and relaxing that by putting the tongue on the floor of the mouth chin pulling down toward the collarbones ever so slightly as we let the crown of the head rise and receive light from above. Inhaling through and outhaling through the nose, lips pillow soft, teeth separated slightly, tongue taking a nap on the floor of the mouth, breathing, just breathing and being, that's all we're doing. Breathing and being. Giving ourselves a moment to just let the, all the thoughts that scramble around, like when you're scrambling an egg, all of that whisking and turmoil and bubbly thought that happens, just letting that settle, letting it settle. Relaxing, teaching our body what it means. When we say relax, this is what it means to relax. Relax, calm down, 
all of these words associated with this feeling right here. We're teaching our dog to relax right now. It's actually a skill that we are teaching, which is a position on the floor where she lies on her side. And so the floor puts some pressure against her belly and it's actually a soothing action. But that's the command is relax. <laughs> and she gets a treat when she lies down on the floor. And I guess the treat for us when we learn to relax on command is that we feel relaxed. That's our treat. Letting the ears hang heavy on the sides of your head. The mouth relax, the nose relax. The sinus cavities under the eyes relax. Give your eyes a break. Let the outer corners of the eyes just be heavy. Gently touching eyelashes to eyelashes. The lids of the eyes not fluttering in tension. Just, just being relaxed. And so maybe that means you crack your eyes open slightly. Maybe it means that they're closed. There's no right here. And there's no wrong. You can't do it wrong. And take your attention around your eyebrows, letting them soften like the snowy eaves on a house. Just let them be heavy and steady. Let your forehead smooth out any lines of worry or concern. We already put all of that stuff onto our brain dump page. There's nothing here right now but a blank canvas. Nice and open, open to possibility, open to love, open to ourselves, open to responding. Just a sense of opening the energy as opposed to contracting the energy around us or and in us. Any energy that we have inside of us permeates our skin and really sends a bubble of energy around us. And so what kind of energy are we walking around in? What is our marinade? What are we, what are we sitting in all day? And what is that energy? What are we doing to ourselves, even when we're not interacting with other people? What are we saying to ourselves? How are we treating ourselves? And how does that affect our interactions with people? I know that when I'm being unkind to myself, more than likely I am going to be unkind toward other people because it's like I've been walking around, you know, in a fight all day in my head, or I've been, been beaten up but the person who's doing the beating up is me, right? And so it doesn't matter who's doing the beating up, whether somebody else is telling me stuff about myself or I'm telling me stuff about myself, it still feels bad. And when I feel bad, when I turn that stuff inward, that creates a whole bunch of nasty energy and I get really edgy and that ends up coming out in every interaction that I have, even though I try to hide it. There's no hiding in parenthood. There's absolutely no hiding, none. And so what happens is, you know, you could put on a show for a couple of minutes when you're on the phone making a doctor appointment, or maybe the, the receptionist pisses you off and you can't hide it and they just send you over the edge. You can usually hide it well enough for a couple of minutes with the person at the grocery store or the friend you bump into or the person you're on the phone with, you can usually do that, but not with the kids because the kids are not going to be playing that game of polite, polite. Most adults will play that polite, polite game with you and it won't really challenge you to look at how you're bringing the energy to your space and to your intentions. Not going to happen. What's going to happen is that whatever energy you are creating in your own body by your own self-talk in your own mind, that, my friend, is what is going to come out when you're talking to your child. 
that's the energy you bring. And if you try to hide it with them, it won't take long before they trigger you or activate you. They say something that pisses you off or they use that whiny tone or something goes wrong and things are not going perfectly. And then before you know it, you're just lashing out. That's where it comes from because our inner state. Okay. And so it's so, 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 so important that we have our self-talk going well, that we're aware of the energy that we're carrying around, that energy bubble that we're walking around in before we take the handle of the door, before we enter the room, before we say the first word to our child, before we receive the first word from our child. It's all super, super, super important to know that we lead with energy and we leave with energy. What's the energy that precedes us? The energy that we also are bringing to our interactions. And then what's the energy that we are leaving behind as we walk away? There's a trail of energy behind us. How do we leave a room? What energy are we leaving behind? It's like a wake of a boat, you know? There's the, if you think of a boat cutting through water, there's the, there's the wake in front of the boat as it's pushing through the water. That's the energy that's preceding us. And then there's the boat itself, right? And then there's the trail behind the boat, which is the wake behind the boat. That's how we are as we're going through life. We've got energy we create by how we move through the water, how we move through life. And so that awareness alone can really help to cut down on a lot of that residual negative energy that we bring to the interactions with our kids. It can help us so much be the person that we want to be with our kids. When we think about, just take a moment. It's not like, you know, hard, hard work. It's not easy, but it's a habit to build. What energy am I bringing to this interaction right now? And what's causing that? And take a look at my self-talk before I talk with other people. How do I need to change that around? What do I need to tell myself to change my energy right now? Because my energy sucks. If your energy sucks, your interactions are going to suck, right? Like I said, with the ones that matter, the, the superficial ones may, not, may or may not be affected. I'm from New York City, so I see people all the time losing it with uh, strangers because that's their outlet for all the negative stuff they have going on in their heads. And then, you know, some people are walking around miserable and then they have an interaction with somebody in the street and they're like, rah, 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 rah. it's almost like, energy spilling out, negative energy spilling out. It's because of what's going on in their heads as they're walking around. So just be mindful. Just be mindful. Be aware. And what's the replacement message? You know, what's the softer, kinder, underneath? It's usually some phrase that's underneath the angry, defensive message that's in your head. And it's usually one of compassion that's going to be able to settle your energy and, and change your energy a bit. What's the energy that you lead with? And what's the energy that you leave with? That is the question. Okay, and you can gently blink your eyes open. Come back to the present. And just take a moment to notice even right now, what is the energy that you have surrounding you if I were to call it an energy bubble, right? Like in the old, the original um, um, Wizard of Oz movie and Glenda comes down in this bubble, Glenda the Good Witch, remember she comes down in this like soap bubble, basically the kind of bubble that you blow and it's like magical and gold and whatever. Picture that and picture your own energy bubble. What color is your bubble? Is it, is it orange? Is it gold? Is it black? Is it gray? Is it thorny? What's the quality of the bubble? What's the color? What's the quality? That's the energy that you bring to you. It's, it's the energy that's in front of you. It's the energy on the sides of you. And it's the energy that, that's behind you, which is why it helps me to think about it as a bubble. You roll into a situation with your child, your partner, your friends, whatever. You roll into that situation in your energy bubble. And I want to encourage you to visualize that. What are you bringing? to the table. What bubble are you bringing to the interaction? And that's actually a great question. What color is your bubble? 
What qualities does your bubble have? And I hope that helps you with every interaction that you have today, every interaction that you have going forward. If you hold on to that visualization, it can be a really, really powerful way for you to regroup and reset and think to yourself, wow, how am I going to, what do I need to do to change the color and the quality of my bubble? Sometimes changing the color can change the quality. Sometimes it has to be a more intentional um, switch of, I don't mean more intentional, I mean uh, just a different switch, but sometimes I'm just saying sometimes a place to start is with uh, changing the color and then that can start to change the quality. And that is going to be affected by your self-talk and by your breathing. And what do you need to say to yourself? If you want to change the color and the quality of your bubble, what needs to be said? Is it something like, everything's okay. I know it feels really scary right now, but everything's going to be okay. I'm going to get through this. I've been through harder. I can get through this, right? You're doing, you're doing great, Lainey. You know, talk to yourself. You say that, and you don't say Lainey to yourself. You insert your own name, right? You're doing great. You got this. And picture a different color bubble around you. See how that affects. And let me know how it goes.